Got everything put back together. Now it looks like a chiller. I couldn't get everything recorded because uh, the super and my boss is coming around because it was a big job and a lot of money spent here. Uh, we'll have those three compressors running for now and uh, until they figure out what they're going to do with the heat exchangers for this side we're just going to leave it alone for now until uh, they make a decision you see the missing three compressors like I said we have to uh, wire these control boxes for the missing compressors because this side gets low voltage from this side so and that's it I'm charging the final unit, 12 pounds. And I'm gonna leave it alone until we're ready to fire it up. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching. source heat pump that uh, I put in about four months ago it was replaced with a defective one it was a lemon one and remember this uh, I think I had a video on this piping I'm just gonna show you guys uh, just how to do basic PM on them you know they're simple just the maintenance um, and I'll kind of just take you what I do um, while I do the, the PMs here um, also, uh, I'd like to apologize to John Shoup. Um, I was way out of my character and uh, I was real negative and uh, disrespectful and uh, really uncalled for. You know, I was just a little pissed and uh, but uh, you know, I should have I should have done what I done and I apologize, sir. Um, hope you could find this thing you want to do. Actually, the first thing I like to do is. Uh, the strain on these so in order to do that we'll shut off the supply and uh, return but most importantly we need to shut off the unit uh, this way it doesn't come on while you're pulling the strainers I mean it will cut out on uh, head pressure high pressure control but some units may not have it although they should have it so Unit off, valves isolated, and there goes our strainer. This around. Okay, so we're gonna remove this plug, which I already got loose already. And grab a little bucket. We're gonna grab a little bucket and we'll drain what's left in the in the lines. Oh just whatever's left in there. Okay. Let's see if I can get you a little better lighting here. Okay. We'll drain that. And that's that for that. Sorry. We'll get I like to use this Knip X plier. It just works really well with these strainers. But in some cases, you're gonna need a pipe wrench. So, so we'll go ahead and uh, remove uh, the strainer real clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that. In. So that's the first thing I do. Now normally in most cases, not all, most, you would see those uh, those flex type vibration uh, eliminator connections, the quick connects, I don't know the exact name for them, but uh, that day when this unit was going up, I was unable to get them, so that's why uh, it was done hard piping. So with that, and then if you want to go ahead and put your plug back, very important because these are Chinese shitty valves and they're leaking. Then what I do is I come and check the filters. In this case, the filter is clean, as you can see. 
And I'll put this guy back. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the panel. And uh, this is a single phase unit, so obviously you wanna check the capacitor, check for e burn wires, and uh, and uh, you wanna check to see if that three-way actuator is also working. Well, how that thing works is um, when this unit is satisfied, that valve closes and uh, stops the supply of water to the unit. It kind of goes into a bypass and dumps it back. Guys, into the there is, is your capacitor. Um, you want to check the capacitor, make sure that you're getting the proper MFDs. And uh, I, I like to just check all the um, electrical components and well, this. But you know, you want to check all your, your relays. This is the blower relay. Obviously, the contact for the compressor, transformers, and just pretty much you want to go through all of this and make sure that everything is solid and uh, nothing is burned, nothing is cooked, no french fries. And uh, that's about it for these men. This is a direct drive. Um, they don't go into defrost mode. There is no uh, emergency heat on these. So they just basically run. As long as you have uh, your uh, 80, 85, even 90 degree water temperature. Make sure that, you know, she's running properly in, co in cooling and in heating. And that's it. You close this baby up, you call it a day. And for a water source heat pump. And in most cases, these units are located in some tight ass space that you can't even get to. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care.